Hello and welcome, RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will compare antennas. In my first test round, just driving in my yard around with analog video and filming it and yeah, laying it side by side and decide which antenna is better. But then I went digital and there is where I got much better results. And so in the second portion, I do Excel analysis. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Let's get it on. Okay, one or two words about my test setup. Here is the GH5 filming screen grabbing from this screen, which is fed by the Clearview ground station here. This is the FPV car. And in all the tests, the transmitting antenna was this speedy B. So let's jump into this comparison. First, I don't show you which antenna is which. Then here is the part where it's really hard because I'm behind the cardboard and the bushes and one wall. And now let's reveal the antennas. All omnis in that case. And on the second run, once again, not showing you the antenna. Here is where the shit hits the fan. And yeah, you can play this back and forth and you get it revealed now and decide which antenna looks best to you. With 25 milliwatts and going behind the carport with the bushes, all of those antennas more or less look like the same shitty experience. The badge of patch antennas and omnis. So if I had to pick some of those, I would probably still the short turn helix versus the longer. This should be also good, but it isn't in my tests. I wonder what, what's up here. And this is the new Orca it's ATBI and I really wonder if the shape does something or no. just supposed to look fancy. You see the element that in the center there. Why isn't it smaller? Ah, maybe someone can explain this to me better. Yeah, you see the same kind of element here, but with distance. Why is not too much distance on the orca? Has to be something, has to do something with the socket here. Maybe still with the larger element, with the sail? I don't know. If it was unnecessary, just for design, they wouldn't make it so large, right? Those looked not as good as the larger siblings. So they promised that the small one will perform as good as the normal size trolley. I'm not so sure about this. Maybe the hard facts on the DJI digital test will give us more insights. So while watching Pavel Spichalski's <laughs> short review about the Foxia Lolly Micros, he even opened one up, which I didn't want to yet. And when I saw the insights, they look quite familiar. This is the insides or these are the insides of a DJI stock antenna left hand polarized. And these are the screenshots from Bubbles video. So you see here it is rather in steps. And here it is like in a diagonal line. But the idea is kind of the same. Traces in plastic feeder material, however you want to call it. Quite cheap, quite small and yeah, effective. I don't know. Sitting here on my lawnmower, also drove around in the house and over there, like a course around the property. Had S2 SPVs on the car with 25 milliwatts. Okay, let's start the round always from my hut here. Here is where I go below the ground level and here is where the comparison starts and you can pause this, play this back and forth, but it might be a bit hard to see. In theory, uh, on the bottom 
middle to right you see the patches and I think they fare better. But yeah, it's quite hard. So this is below ground level and between or behind a few trees. Yeah, that's a bumpy ride and I tried to f drive as consistent as I could. <laughs> and you see that this is like one or two meters below ground level of where I'm sitting. And then the street behind the barn. And behind the barn is where when I fly I also get the worst reception with 25 milliwatts. Then here it is better again and Closing the first lap. Then we head into the house, which is, yeah, the number of walls increases. I go down a long straight hallway. It's not always easy to not bump into something, so I had to cut there once or twice. But it wasn't that bad there. But most of them got to around 5 megabit when I was in the all the way in the house. First round with four Foxia stubbies. Second test will be with four SPVs. Third test looks fancy. Those are the new Foxia Lollipop micros. After the third lap I was concerned that driving on the grass drains the batteries too much but still have 86% in each of the tanks. Those are two 5000 milliamp two cells. They are quite old so they only have like 3000 milliamps I suppose. This is the force test and this really looks mean or dangerous if you wear the antennas like this. We'll see how linear antennas fare. I have linear antennas on the car as well. So on this test it should be almost DJI stock antennas but I miss one so I have a linear so I don't have a polarization mismatch which will also be a test maybe. And here I have the original DJI air unit antennas which are left polarized. So let's see how the stock antennas work in this environment. Now the polarization mismatch. Four SPVs right hand polarized on the goggles and two lefties, the original DJI. So now we will do SPVs here. And SPV plus patch on the goggles. Where I'm sticking to the thing that I currently know, patches on the bottom. There was also the theory that patches on one side, top and bottom, are a good combo. Patches on the top and bottom right and the SPVs on the left side. And still SPVs on the car. Okay, since DJI gives us nice log files, we can analyze them in Excel, as I already showed you in earlier videos. If you have 25, that's perfect image. The first step where it falls from 25 is of course if I go downhill there to the trees and this is uh, going below surface. So it's of course limiting your RF signal if you lose line of sight kind of. And th all these spikes here are going between the trees. So I go like 50 meters down there between trees, return and once I returned I go up a little hill here and this point is where I'm on the street and have line of sight once again. Line of sight but I sit behind a wooden wall in the, in the shop. So there's this short straight where I have line of sight and then I go behind the barn. This is this thing here or this. And behind the barn, of course, you see a significant drop because there's a lot of scrap, to be honest. <laughs> so this is the portion behind the barn and then line of sight again. And this is where I enter the house, where bitrate drops to below 5 megabits. And here you can see how good the antennas fare on those really deep ends. So here we have each of the test runs. 
you know try to drive as consistent as possible but those portions are not always the same of course you can uh, download the excel file if you want to examine it yourself here for example we can compare the spv antennas and the lolim micros orange is spv i tried to sync the data lines with the first drop here and you see it is quite similar i feel like the spvs have a bit better signal here overall and here at the end in the house uh, i drove against something so i it took me longer to get outside the house but the drop was about the same uh, around four megabits so not too much difference here on this test on the lolly micros versus the spvs but maybe i just didn't drive too far away to see how bad the micros actually are that's a little takeaway from another test sorry then interesting to see how the linear antennas would work so this is the linear test test four sorry it is a bit hard to overlay those curves correctly i didn't drive as consistent as i should but in most cases i would say the blue line which is the linear antennas is higher up than the orange ones so it is quite obvious here behind the barn driving behind the barn i get better results and also inside the house the spike doesn't go all the way to four mbits it stays above five mbits so it's not a major deal but it looks better than the spv antennas so in this scenario close range going behind stuff driving with a car maybe your linear antennas would be better i hope you didn't throw away all your linear antennas over the year, over the last years the stock antennas they are not terrible but also not the best ones here and i compared them stock antennas and polarization mismatch here the blue line is the polarization mismatch the worst case but it isn't as bad as i thought once again so I don't know what's up here but at least i could have um, overlaid those curves right nicely so you could say it's even better to have the wrong polarization than to just use the chai stock antennas now the interesting segment of patches this is the kind of the recommended setup as i've seen it on ndrc and many others using the patches on the bottom and the omnis on top however my orientation of patches is a bit yeah it's not perfect so the blue line test 7 is the conventional method of patches on the bottom and omnis on top and it looks like it fared better for example in the house the other method would be on the right side of the goggles omnis and on the left side bottom and top the patches behind the trees and everywhere looks like left side is better maybe i didn't look into the direction of the house so the house got the additional gain of on the blue test here and not on the orange curves or spikes look like patches on one side are better and then i tested right versus left so patches all on the left side is orange and patches on the right side is blue so this is pretty similar once again the orange line looks better to me my recommendation is from now on use your patches on the left side of your goggles yes that's it for the excel test Okay, thanks a lot for watching. I can't believe you made it all the way to the end of the video. It shows that you are curious about antennas as well. Everybody is. It's hard to get solid data. It's hard to get good test results. And I will continue to test it uh, in the next video with flying my drone away as far as is necessary without risking it. I'm, I'm the cautious guy. 
Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. Please subscribe and also use the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos.